Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, just uh, want to give you a brief in introduction. My name is Saj. I've been at uh, Microsoft for about a few months now. Um, worked at a couple other companies. They're all there in the uh, presentation, so I won't go into details about that. Uh, but today we're going to go uh, through uh, the virtual network tap. It's uh, currently in, um, I think it's private preview or public private preview. You need to um, go through some hoops to get it to work, uh, but uh, uh, I'll go through that. It's very easy. You have your uh, network packet broker and uh, create a tap and you can send all your traffic to your uh, security tools or your forensics tools. So um, what most people desire, uh, or at least network uh, administrators love to have is something similar in the cloud. So uh, this is the current setup uh, here in on-prem and uh, the goal is to have something similar in Azure. And so that's what uh, VTAP does. Currently, I guess before VTAP, uh, what one would do was have agents running on each of the uh, virtual machines or resources that you want to uh, tap. And the agents will talk to another, uh, uh, like an NVA. So in this case here, uh, GigaView. And Traffic is sent directly to the NVA and the NVA displays it and you could uh, process it or do whatever you need with the uh, with the packets that you get. So this is the current setup that was uh, prior to uh, the introduction of VTAP. And so what VTAP does is um, that it's 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 native to the cloud. There are no agents running in any of the VMs or any of the uh, um, resources uh, in your in your uh, uh, subscription. All you have is just the VTAP agent itself. I mean, uh, running outside of uh, running outside of this and uh, and then you can have it sent to either a collector VM or a collector um, scale set a load balancer uh, if the throughput is really huge. So does that make sense? Uh, you have any questions here? Just uh, I'll take a brief stop here. Okay. And so, um, what are the advantages? One is that you're not running any agents, so there's no load running on any of these VMs. Uh, second is that you don't have to go through the process of making sure that you have the right version of the agent or anything like that. Um, this is just, it's inherent within uh, Azure's network. And um, uh, so, yeah, so those are the thing, a few advantages that I see in this, and that's been, uh, I think that's a, it's an awesome thing, so. And uh, the second part of it is also, let me see if I can, uh, yeah. So uh, again, like it's a continuous streaming of your VM traffic to a packet collector, agentless, so you don't have to install anything. And oh, the other part of it is that um, it's outside of the purview of, uh, so if SecOps wants to uh, uh, monitor the traffic and uh, they can do that as long as their subscription will allow them to have a, a view of other subscriptions within the tenant. So that's the other big advantage that I see. So uh, you totally segment, you know, SecOps from the VM owner. So the VM owner has no, uh, authority to you know stop um, uh, packet analysis or anything like that. So that's another big uh, uh, advantage here. So currently, um, what happens is the traffic that is being sent is uh, sent to an NBA, and the, these are the some of our pa partners current uh, that um, Microsoft has, and so um, and we are adding more as well. So. And um, I could show you a small demo that I had set up here. I have um, um, a resource group called VTAP Mon uh, Monitor, 
And uh, within the resource group, I have this uh, VNet with, with two subnets. And uh, I have uh, two VMs, um, VM1 and VM2. These are the ones that are being monitored. And I have a collector VM that's on the same subnet. It doesn't have to be. It could be in a different subnet. It could be in a different uh, resource group. And uh, that's receiving all the all the packets. So uh, any questions about the uh, setup that I have? OK. So, uh, please let me know if this is not big enough. So is this clear? Yeah, I think it's clear. OK. So let's go to, um, oops. All right, so this is my uh, collector VM. And um, like I mentioned, I have a, 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 just a, a small uh, binary that's capturing packets that is coming on the current interface. So the way it works is if you look at the uh, diagram that I have here, uh, VTAP is running outside of this, outside the purview of this, uh, resource group, it's monitoring these two uh, interfaces, uh, 1383 and 2140, and sending all the data up here to 2945, okay? And, um, oops. So I'm on currently on the collector VM here, and uh, I'm just gonna, monitoring traffic here. And so, as you can see, this just simply prints out um, traffic that it sees between two hosts. Uh, so let me just uh, go up here and show you. Uh, this is the first, uh, oh, this is the second monitored host, and this is, the, let me show the first one. So if I were to do a simple TCP dump, um, You see um, traffic that's going between uh, two uh, between 168, which is uh, Azure's internal network, and this VM. Uh, yeah, and you see like some other packets, and so the same packets that you see on this host, you get at the collector VM as well. Um, the 250.0.4 is the IP address of the uh, monitored VM, and and you see tra the same the same kind of traffic coming in uh, at the collector VM, and then uh, although I'm not showing any of the ICMP packets, uh, I just I just tag it as an ICMP. But all TCP packets, I just uh, show tell you what kind of uh, port, whether it's HTTP or some other port. And uh, the same thing on the, the second monitored host. If I were to do um, You see the same. Um, you can see the same. This is all in another subnet 250, 10, 251 uh, Similarly, here uh, you should also see packets yeah, within the Azure network. And if I were to add uh, some more, um, let's see if we were to. Uh, I have a web server running on each of those uh, monitored VMs. If I were to do a couple of uh, there you go, and you see this is my my current IP. Um, whoops, that's SSH. I apologize. Let's uh, go. You see my SSH uh, traffic as well. This is my current IP, such I'm uh, accessing uh, the host. So, uh, so it's pretty simple. It's easy to install. The setup is uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Um, if you go to the website, you should be able to see um, the um, 
uh, instructions there, but some of the prerequ prereqs to get this to work, uh, you need to email the VTAP team uh, with your subscription ID to enroll in the preview. So it'll only work after the subscription has been enrolled. So, uh, and also it's important to note there's no SLA while VTAP is in preview. Um, you can only create a VTAP with uh, Azure CLI, so you need uh, version 2.046 or greater. And uh, and within that, VTAP is have to be has to be added as an extension to your Azure CLI. And um, so I just uh, click on the links that I provided here. They should give you more info here. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's under the VNet documentation, so it's part of the um, uh, co under the po uh, concepts header. So uh, there's more information on how uh, VTAP works, uh, your prereqs, prerequisites that you need, and uh, and then if you click on, there's a link at the bottom on how to create a virtual network tap. So it's it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have to create your subscription. I'm sorry, create a resource group. Um, make sure you've installed the extension, um, register the extension that is, and then um, uh, configure uh, a tap uh, and then a collective VM where the tap would be sent to and configure tap on the network interfaces that you need to monitor and you'd be able to do that. So you can either send it to a single VM or you can send it to a, a load balancer uh, that is sitting behind and um, uh, and then the source code that I have this should be, uh, it's just, it's a really simple, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, I just had a couple hours to finish this up. So it was just, it's a very simple uh, packet filter written in C, you just need to compile it and, and, and it's, it's open source, um, compile it and run it on your system. So you can just see packets as they come across. Otherwise what happens is that packets are actually encapsulated uh, with VXLAN. So there's a VXLAN header on top of the original packet. And so all, all this program does is just uh, de-encap uh, those packets and show you the actual packets that are going to um, going to the uh, the VMs, the, the monitored VMs. So, so any questions so far? Okay. Um, if you want to unmute and ask the question, please. Go ahead. I have one question though. What sure. does the third party integration does with this tool? So if you have third party integration, what you get from that? Sure. Like you said some of the third party um, devices that are there to that works with that to what that will provide? Sure. So uh, great question. So here, I guess the the process that I'm running here on my collector VM is is similar to a third party, and in the sense that it just it just gives me a basic information of what's going on on the um, what's going on on uh, you know on on my monitored VMs. Whereas the third party would, would have a lot more features, like a, it's a full-fledged NVA that would give you, you could do like some kind of forensics, you could do analysis uh, at the collector uh, NVA, and, uh, and and you can even do uh, identification of like, you know, for example, uh, SQL injection or any kind of, uh, uh, any other kind of, uh, you know, um, threats uh, to determine like what is outside of the patterns that are normal behavior so that you, you can uh, act on that. And so uh, does that answer your question? I hope basically it kind of yeah. a deeper, deeper information. That's yes, it's a basically a security monitoring tool. You could uh, monitor network uh, network packets in much more detail if you have some kind of deep packet inspection tool to uh, understand uh, your traffic flow to get some analysis. So uh, just as you would have something on prem where you would be monitoring network traffic and trying to uh, uh, you know get some usage patterns or trying to uh, you know see if there's any security issues 
um, that would um, uh, th that's where the partners would uh, really help. So, so what Azure provides is the infrastructure po portion of it, uh, and the, uh, our you know partners would uh, use uh, would use that data and uh, um, provide data analysis, security analysis, any kind of patterns that you need to look at. Good. So, uh, if there are no other questions, let me check the IM window. If there are no questions. So, uh, if there are no questions, uh, what I'm going to do is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, post the video and uh, the deck. And by the way, the link to the deck is in the uh, description of the video. We will post it uh, to the, our YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, hopefully everybody's there next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch. And have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Saj. Thank you very much. So one more thing, uh, Naveed, is uh, regarding the service updates. Yeah, so uh, since uh, we had Microsoft build this last week, uh, I think that we're probably going to have a more uh, fuller service update uh, next week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We may just do one session on some important updates. So, uh, yeah, so thank you. So next week we will have like a, a session on some important build updates, some general stuff, and some uh, updates which are kind of uh, significant. So. If you're not aware, this week was the build conference, and next week we're going to do a quick recap of build conference. So, thank you. Cool. Thanks.